Alright, welcome to another episode of Tack Talk. Uh, we're gonna try to keep this intro as short as possible. Uh, we got two major topics we're talking about today. Uh, the second half of today's show, we're gonna be talking about I-1639, which is a uh, Washington State Gun Control Initiative that's trying to go through the ballot right now. We've been having a lot of problems with that. Uh, in the first half of the show, we're gonna be talking about the carbon tax that uh, our Governor Jay Inslee and our Attorney General Bob Ferguson seem to really, really support uh, here in Washington State as well. So, but before we begin, I do want to say thanks to all the interest that I've got from last Tuesday's episode for people who are interested in getting commercials done for their businesses or their uh, programs or whatnot. Um, if you know anybody else, we would like more involved. We're try our goal is to get 30 different businesses to have at least 30 second to one minute long commercials. So that way we can extend our show here at Talk Talk over up to an hour. Um, that gives me, you know, enough commercial breaks to keep you guys entertained and well informed and at least, uh, uh, I guess keep your attention span primarily, but um, yeah, so we got a lot of those guys lined up It's gonna be about a week before we got them squared away And uh, if you know anybody else get them involved. It's uh, like I said, we're not trying to get richer at the show We're just trying to get more sponsors so I can increase the amount of time I can talk for so Diving into the carbon tax here in Washington State uh, bear with me because we are gonna be limited on our first segment here uh, This is from Joey Monson over at Northwest. I'm gonna go ahead and read his article is written July 10 2018 um, and I bring this up now because it's still it's gonna be on the ballot measure this year. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Controversy behind this one and I think it's gonna be one of those bills that might get passed just because not people to not too many people are aware of The impact that it has on our state versus the output that we provide on the world So Washington carbon ta carbon tax is about money not science The governor has been trying for years to jack up the cost of living with the carbon tax though now There's an initiative on the ballot that would make your guess costs skyrocket. They say that they would impose carbon fees on the polluters in our state. The measure would raise billions of dollars which would be passed along to you and me, the taxpayers. We already pay the second highest gas tax in the United States of America, but they want more. They say that it's not a tax, it's a fee. But we're getting our language back and we know that it is nothing but a tax. It will be more expensive to heat your home and fuel your car. And all of that is undeniably a bogus cause. The role that you and I play in global warming. I know what makes people heads explodes is when I say that, but I've never been more certain of anything in my life. Again, this is an article by Dory Monson. On this matter, I'm positive that I'm more realistic and honest than all the scientists who would talk about climate change. Here's what I want you to think about. How long have internal combustion engines been a thing in our country? To an extent to where they could have any impact. Let's be generous and say it's the 1920s. If you know anything about the automotive and societal trends, we're going to have mostly electric vehicles in the next 10 to 20 years. So let's say that 1920 to 2040 in the, is the window where cars are polluting the atmosphere. This is where I'd love to take on the climate change scientists. That's 120 years. And how old is Earth? The best estimate is 4.5 billion years. That period of cars represents one 45 millionth of a lifespan of this planet. Look at the volcano on the big island of Hawaii. Think about the trillions of cows that have been farting since the beginning of cows. Think about the ring of fire volcanoes. And you're telling me that a technology that represents a 45, 45 millionth of our planet's lifespan is worth taxing you and me billions of dollars here in Washington? That's insane. This is just about transferring billions of dollars from the private sector to government control, and the scientists are either wrong, stupid, or part of the conspiracy. Now, this is a really good point because I even posted on my Facebook myself um, that if you actually look at the numbers, uh, Washington State, where our governor Jay Inslee here in Washington State, and backed by Bob Ferguson, they want this carbon tax to be initiated because they're saying that that's our it's our civic duty to here in Washington State to give back to the world what we take. And realistically, Washington State makes up one one hundredth of a thousandth, a thousandth, excuse my mouth here, uh, of a fraction of a percent of the world's carbon emissions. So for us to be taxed when we're already some of the highest tax, I mean, when, when the oil, when the barrels of oil come in from the Middle East through the Atlantic Ocean, it's got to hit the East Coast. Then it hits railway, railroad, or it hits the trucks, and it's got to travel west. So, like, due to logistics and just basic marketing, we pay some of the highest fees in gas alone here in Washington State. And on top of that, we already pay some taxes that the money allocations aren't really properly redistributed to our state's needs and what our state requires that they have promised that they would when they took these taxes. So, again, this is one of those... 
uh, taxes that when Jay Inslee campaigned for re-election for governor of Washington State, he promised that he wouldn't propose anything like this. Yet, again, second term election, he's got interest for going for president in 2020, and here he is trying to get more of your money. So we're going to keep this first segment short. We're coming on our five and a half minute break here, and when we get back, we'll be talking about I-1639. See you guys when you get back. Combat Systems at BeastCombatSystems.com Protecting those who prepare 801-987-0893 Percussive body armor carriers and tactical gear for military, law enforcement, contractors, corporate security, responsible citizens, and border patrol. Beast Combat Systems at BeastCombatSystems.com 801-987-0893 Look, you don't want to admit it, but you're getting old. You've got lower back pain, you've got upper back pain, you've got neck pain, you've got pain in places in your body that you can't reach. As an adult, you need to go and get your weekly massages. It doesn't always have to be weekly. It can be bi-weekly, it can be once a month. However, the point is you need to get your massages. Intuitive Touch by Amy Pope is a licensed massage practitioner that will make sure that she can alleviate your pain from your occupation and from your daily life. Check out Intuitive Massage by Amy Pope. Okay, welcome back from our commercial break from Tac for Tac Talk. So I'm gonna try to rush through this one as fast as possible because we're limited on our our segment time. But there's so much information to share with you guys that it's going to be kind of difficult. So bear with me as I kind of organize my notes here and try to get it as uh, efficient as possible for you guys. So going on to I-1639 is a Washington State's latest gun control initiative. And again, it's one of those things where it's one of those, you know, God forbid a, a school shooting happened in our state or, you know, a couple drive-bys. Because people like me get punished. Law-abiding citizens. Gun owners. So I-1639 is exactly that. How can our state, our liberal, progressive-minded politicians in our state control the guns that are on the street the same way they control the drugs that are on the street during the drug war? I mean, if we just ban drugs, no one will do drugs. Oh, wait. Just like murder, right? <laughs> we'll ban murder. Oh, wait. Oh, it doesn't seem to work. But let's keep trying to punish the law-abiding citizens. So this is uh, from my Northwest. The efforts to pass stricter gun control laws in Washington failed in the legislative this year, such as raising the age limit to buy semi-automatic rifles. But voters could get the final say if, it back, if backers of I-1639 can gather enough signatures over the next few weeks. Here's the beauty of that. This was written on June 19th, 2018. Now, in August of 2018, Judge Dixon barred I-1639 from the ballot. Now, this is important to remember because I'm reading an article from June, which says that this is an initiative being proposed. And obviously in August, Judge Dixon blocked it. It's back on the ballot. So what happened was the state Supreme Court went ahead and overruled Judge Dixon's uh, ruling on the uh, barring it from the ballot. And that's primarily because the signatures that were required to gain that initiative to gain momentum uh, were based on lies. Uh, the proper, uh, it wasn't properly able to be read, for example. A lot of the, uh, the lingo and the language was very misconstru misconstruing. Uh, it, was, it was written to purposely mislead people who would be signing it, making it sound like, oh, it, it doesn't punish the law abiding citizens. It's just, a, it's just a, a safe gun initiative act. Well, that doesn't make any freaking sense. If anything, you got the George Soros and the, you know, those groups funding it. One of them was uh, the Seahawks owner, Paul Allen, who funded, you know, millions of dollars to make this go happen. So it was a big victory for us when Judge Dixon denied this from being able to go to the ballot because of all that money that was put into this initiative to make it so. However, some people are in the pockets of George Soros and, you know, the whole movement for Antifa and let's, like, change America's Constitution. We got some, apparently, some liberal progressive judges on our state Supreme Court that are in the pockets of these people. So, uh, here's a small clip from uh, Judge Dixon when he blocked uh, I-1639 back in August. 
This court has the duty to ensure that the process complies with the law. Voters have a right to know. Sponsors have a corresponding obligation to provide what the initiative seeks to accomplish. A full, complete, and readable proposed initiative serves those rights and those obligations. Otherwise, there is no assurance that voters would know what the proposed changes were. The text on the back of these petitions do not allow the voters to make informed decisions. For this court to hold otherwise would be to condone non-compliance with the clear provisions of the law. This court will issue a writ of mandamus to the Secretary of State to stop certification. And that's the end of that clip. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, it just ends there, so we can't exactly get it uh, finished. But I'll go ahead and read the article from my 1639 back in June, which kind of shows exactly what he's talking about here. Uh, for example, one of the first... Uh, issues written with the bill is safe storage and here's a quote from uh, uh it says here dave workman with the gun mag says that an issue for gun owners is quote a lot of gun owners are worried that no matter how they store that firearm if it's taken and used in a crime they're going to get penalized by the state because they didn't have their gun secured well enough to, pre to prevent it from being taken workman said safe storage is really a subjective issue here for some people that just requires leaving a gun inside your house which is locked while you're not away Beyond that, not everybody can afford a gun safe. Some people revert to various locking devices. Some of them are just cable locks, and you can slip a cable lock with a good pair of wire cutters or bolt cutters. So there is that concern that it's going to discourage firearm ownership. So that's a, that's a great point. Um, I mean, there's your, 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 your safe storage for a firearm is your house. I mean, if you break into my house and then you find my gun, that's not my fault. You shouldn't have been breaking into my house to begin with. Now, if you break into my house when I'm not home, that's obviously going to be a given. I've, hopefully, I'm good at keeping my gun secured naturally for my own self, but that's not. The, it doesn't come down to the citizen to be held accountable after a crime has been committed when a, when a criminal breaks into your home, takes your weapon, and goes and uses it. On that same idea, let's say you park your car at your friend's house and you go stay the night at whoever. You have, you're all away from your vehicle, and let's say a criminal gets in. He's high on meth. He's drinking. He does whatever. It's not his vehicle. He's not got cause for concern, and he goes and he hits some people, T-bones on an old lady. Let's say someone dies during this process. Well, now the criminal's gone, but they have your vehicle. Should you be held accountable for his actions? I mean, logically, your brain goes, no. That doesn't make any sense. Well, then why doesn't the same logic apply to these people when it comes to firearm ownership? I mean, if you break into my home, steal my gun, and go kill someone else with it, why should I be held accountable? It's the same thing as you taking my car and going to kill someone else with my car. Why should I be held accountable? The safe measure that prevents the gun from being stolen is already the fact that you've locked your front door. So, and then moving on here into this article by My Northwest, uh, and we're just going over our, uh, our time here. Um, it says here at the end, I-1639 allows DOL, the Department of Licensing, to charge people buying semi-auto rifles a new fee of up to $25 to cover the additional administrative costs that come along with the increased background check requirements and new requirements for gun dealers to provide, gun bu to provide buyers information about increased risk association with guns, including suicide. They basically waive your HIPAA rights as soon as you go buy a gun. Your HIPAA rights are your medical privacy rights. That's... that. <laughs> Don't even get, we're going to have to finish this on the next show unless we do a special Saturday broadcast, which is something I do have planned for this season. Uh, in the meantime, thank you for tuning in. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this, guys. This is absolutely ridiculous. And the more people we get kind of standing up for this kind of information, the more information we get shared, the more acknowledgement this gets, the more common sense and logic that people will start to kind of share and kind of agree on. So thank you for tuning in. We're at the end of our show, and I will see you guys either this Saturday or Tuesday. We'll see how the comments go. Thanks for listening.